as I referenced in the last video, this can't be a good time for a lot of you hardcore fans and you hardcore WWE fans. It just can't be. CM Punk's been gone over a year now. He's getting ready to fight in UFC. You know, Dolph Ziggler is toiling in some type of hell, and frankly, who cares? <laughs> Fuck Dolph Ziggler. But you got Seth Rollins out with injury, Cesaro out with injury, guys like Sami Zayn and Finn Balor, Hideo Itami, Samoa Joe, guys that you would logically support, are all down at the NXT level, which is fine for NXT, but that's not the main roster, and that has really no bearing, it seems like, at least at this moment, on WrestleMania. And, you know, that's something coming down the pike way in the future, potentially. You know, so you look at it and you say, you know, who, who are you going to support now? Who do you throw your weight behind? You know, kind of like you did in a lot of ways with Seth Rollins once Daniel Bryan was out with injury. Who's your go-to guy? Who do you help try to elevate to that next level? I mean, you got Kevin Owens maybe, but, you know, the company doesn't seem very committed to him at this point. You know, maybe you'd throw your weight behind another underdog type of guy like a Neville, but again, the company most certainly doesn't seem dedicated or invested in him at this moment. So you've probably got two logical next step options for a lot of you, and I understand them. One would be AJ Styles, you know, a guy you've been wondering for so many years what would happen if he came to the WWE. Now he's finally here, a guy who's wrestled around the world. He's made some money all around the world. He's had great matches all around the world with all different types of people and all different types of territories and promotions. And you look at him, now he's finally got this shot, and you want to help him make the most out of it. And... You know, I respect AJ Styles, and I have no major gripes or problems with AJ Styles. And I understand now, when you're looking at it from a logical standpoint, CM Punk, Daniel Bryan, he went to Seth Rollins. Now, none of those guys are in the picture at the moment. Who would be the next logical, safe bet? You'd say AJ Styles. And a lot of you are going to get behind him. And that's fine. You know, I wouldn't be surprised if that's what happened. Um, and then you've got Dean Ambrose, you know, similar to how you did with Seth Rollins once CM Punk and then Daniel Bryan were out of the picture. Now you've got to invest your energies into one person in particular you know, to help ele elevate him, and it was Rollins. Well, now Rollins is out with injury too, and you look and you see what's going on with the Roman Reigns ramrod job is what you feel on top of the lack of star power on the roster in general, the lack of other interesting, compelling characters. And you look at Dean Ambrose, similar to AJ Styles, as another logical step, as another guy to throw a lot of your weight behind. And you know, in a lot of ways, Ambrose is deserving of it too. You know, he's paid his dues in the business over the years. You know, he's a guy that can be, can be interesting, can be entertaining. He's been a guy that's been in some big stories and some big spots in WWE. So you feel like he's this close, he's on the cusp, and if you really throw your weight behind him, you can help push him to the next level. And again, that makes a lot of sense. I understand it. And in particular, you yourselves know you've seen the power of what you could do, the hardcore fan base, what they can do, sometimes for the better and sometimes for the not. But there's no question that there is a power there. And a lot of what the WWE has done in recent years has been in part to appease you, especially now when dealing with the importance of the WWE Network. I mean, they gave you a 434-day title reign with CM Punk. They gave you Daniel Bryan being the feature prominent story of a WrestleMania, something CM Punk didn't even get. CM Punk never got a WrestleMania built around him. Daniel Bryan did. And that WrestleMania 30 being built on the back of Daniel Bryan and being built around Daniel Bryan came because the hardcore fan base said, this is it, we're tired of this bullshit, enough is enough, and it's time for a change. They're channeling my inner Owen heart. So you've seen that power, and you see how you've been able to force the WWE's hands. And you sit there and say to yourself, you could do it again. And frankly, based off the way the company operates, like I said, sometimes for the better, and frankly, sometimes for the not, you can have a lot of power. And you can force the WWE's hand. And you can shift their creative philosophy. And you can force them to do something that you want to do. But here's my thing. Is that to me, my opinion, my opinion, is throwing your weight behind a Dean Ambrose is more of the same. No offense, but it is. Throwing your weight behind an AJ Styles in particular to me is more of the same. Again, no offense, but it's frankly kind of true. If you're going to throw your weight behind somebody, if you really want to affect some positive change in the WWE and in the product, 
then I'm all for, you know, trying to sit there and make your voices heard. I'm all for gathering around somebody and rallying and uniting behind somebody to affect positive change. But if you're going to do it, why not do it in a bigger, more important, more meaningful, and more significant way for the performers, the product, the company, the business as a whole, for the fan base, everybody. If you're going to do it, in my opinion, do it right. And if you want to make it matter, then you need to really make it matter. And this is, again, no offense to Dean Ambrose or AJ Styles and their fans. You could get behind them, and it could work. But it's kind of like a lather, rinse, repeat, wash cycle. It's more of the same. So as much as we talk about wanting to make things different, why not truly get behind something, rally behind something, and make something different happen, and make something bigger happen, make something more significant and meaningful and impactful long-term happen. Do it in a bigger way. And here's what I'm talking about. Is the WWE has a major credibility problem when it comes to the mainstream. And I'm sorry, this is true. And I don't think it has anything to do necessarily with it being fake. That's a scripted, predetermined crap. I mean, that's the stigma it's had for years and years and years, and we've seen how the WWE can still be huge. It can still be larger in life. It can be a form of entertainment that people have to take seriously, even if they don't take the product itself seriously. They still have to take the brand and the genre and the art form seriously because of the audiences they draw, the attention they get, the ratings that they can get, and all of that. And how many of these guys could potentially become household names and they have over the years? Not so much now, but they have over the years. You know, when we talk about it, and people like Jim Cornette talk about it, and I think they're slightly off the mark, sometimes more than off the mark, but talking about how the WWE, and I think Austin's talked about this too, that needs to be presented in a shoot-type, realistic type of style. Well, I'm going to piggyback off of that for a second like I have before. I don't disagree with the fact that the way the product is built now, the way the product is marketed now, the way the product is presented now, that they don't emphasize athleticism because they do. They emphasize athleticism and in ring action far more than they do character development or storytelling or plot twists or cliffhangers or anything like that at all. It primarily is about the in ring action, meaning as a result, you know, when Seth Rollins once said that it's not the era of larger life characters anymore, it's kind of sad, but frankly, it's kind of true. It's the reality of the WWE product today, for better or in a lot of ways, actually the worse. But if we're going to talk about athleticism, and we're going to talk about how it's about that athleticism of the competitors and the in-ring product, then how ridiculous does the WWE look in this modern age and time where it is largely dominated by the white athlete? You know, let's take out the token Roman Reigns crap that you're surely going to throw out there. How ridiculous is it in general that this product, by and large, is dominated by the white athlete? In a time where you just had Cam Newton, a black man, be the NFL's most valuable quarterback at the or most valuable player, excuse me, at the quarterback position, at a time where the majority of the best players in the NBA are black athletes at a time where the Super Bowl MVP was a black athlete in Von Miller, where you have numerous top-flight black athletes dominating the NFL, the same thing with the NBA. How ridiculous is it is this day of modern time where the WWE basically makes themselves like golf, basically makes themselves like the NHL, but not nearly as diverse, where they basically make themselves like Major League Baseball, but again, not nearly as diverse as them. The over-reliance on the white athlete. If you're going to be marketing and to your athleticism, you're going to talk about the skill and athleticism of your performers. And you're going to be building them up as great big athletes. This is an inconvenient truth, but we know when we talk about white athletes, there's a certain part of a snicker there. There's a certain part of a, huh, huh, is that a real athlete? Fair or not, it's a societal reality, and both black people and white people do it, and we know it's true. Sure, you'll get the dudes like the J.J. Watts, and they're just freaking monsters and man-childs and everything else. You know, you'll get the Chris Stapps Porzingis's, God bless him, and what he's doing in the NBA. But by and large, there's a certain stigma there. You know, when you talk about guys in the NBA, you talk about guys in the NFL, especially when it comes to athletic skill positions, people are surprised and shocked when one can dominate, when one can be at the top of the league. It's not an expectation. It's an expectation in this country, especially in the U.S. and our sporting society, fairly or not. 
that the black athlete is going to be superior and the black athlete is going to dominate. And they expect a black athlete at the top. So how stupid is it when they come to WWE and they see it largely dominated by small white guys? And to me, I think it's ridiculous from a WWE standpoint, from a business standpoint, because it's not catching up with the times and the modern reality and the understanding of the shifting demographics, both of the fan base and the country. The WWE's black fan base is much larger than the WWE seems to either want to recognize or imagine or uh, relate to or market to. They have a huge black fan base. You know, at the end of the day, at some point in time, every once in a while, they're going to want one of their own. They're going to want somebody that they can get behind. The little boys, the little girls are going to want to get behind somebody that they can relate to fully, that they feel like understands them and understands their lives, somebody that looks like them. You know, that's why in the NBA, somebody like a Christoph Porzingis comes on the scene and it's such a big deal is because the white media and frankly, the white fan base, who is still the larger portion of the fan base that actually goes to the games and buys the tickets, they're happy to see somebody that kind of looks like them. Makes it feel like that somebody like them could still actually play in today's NBA. People will talk about it being this or that. The fact is, that's the truth. That's the reality of our sporting society in this country. And what's troubling about this is the WWE seems to go out of their way to alienate a demographic, a fan base that represents at least a third of their total fan base. This whole belief that the wrestling fan base is largely white and redneck is slightly an outdated philosophy and an outdated viewpoint. In a lot of ways, the WWE has become the GOP when it comes to a lack of understanding and a lack of outreach and appeal to non-white demographics. And that's the truth of the matter. And imagine that Vince and Linda running a company like the GOP. Just saying. And you know, from a WWE public relations standpoint, you know, you've got this segment of the audience that you're really not trying to appeal to. You really don't seem to care that much about. And you're really not trying to grow and get bigger in. And that seems to be a ridiculous, ridiculous notion and concept. And it is, especially when you look at the fact that this is the number one skeleton in the WWE's closet that they just can't lock away, that they just can't barricade in place. People can talk about sexism, but people don't care about that as much. Honestly. People can talk about some of the allegations of homosexuality and everything else, and sexual abuse and rape and everything else over the years. And honestly, at the end of the day, people don't care as much about that. But especially in this point in time, Race is the thing that people will still talk about. Race can be still be the most polarizing and engaging thing that we have to discuss, debate, and argue about. And based off of their history over the years, in particular when it comes to their black performers, the WWE has all types of skeletons that they can't run away from. It's like the whole situation with the stupidity of the Titus O'Neil suspension. He did something stupid, then the company acted fucking stupid in the suspension. But it opened up the can of worms, the possibility for it to be taken to a whole different level. That to me, in this case, of all people, me, I didn't think it needed to be escalated to because I didn't think it fit the situation at hand, and it wasn't appropriate. It was the wrong attention focused on the wrong thing. However, it was so bad that the WWE had to respond to it because at the end of the day, they know being run by people like Vince McMahon and Michael P.S. Hayes and Triple H. That's not a proud history of diversity there. There's not a proud history of appealing to the non-white fan base, you know, building up non-white wrestlers, in particular black wrestlers. This is the number one skeleton that the company cannot run away from. And all I'm saying is this, is that if you're going to get behind somebody, why not get behind somebody different? Why not actually push somebody to the moon that will represent a seismic shift for the product and for the brand that can be beneficial both in the short term and the long term? In my opinion, if you're going to get behind somebody at this moment in time, you get behind either Big E or when he comes to the main roster, Apollo Crews. Now to me, I would at this moment get behind Big E because he's a lot closer to a main event spotlight than an Apollo Crews is. And frankly, you look at this from several different angles. Number one, Big E is one of the most entertaining things we have on WWE television on a week-in, week-out basis. I don't think that's a disputable point. What he's doing with the New Day, 
You know, it's working for him. I don't like everything that they do. I don't like the direction that they went with it. But he's making something out of it. And every time you see Big E, he does something. There's a life there. There is there's an it factor there. It's similar to what I saw in The Rock when he was a part of the nation in 1998, even though the focus would be on Farouk and this and that. You would always notice The Rock. There was always something there. You knew he had figured it out to a degree. You knew he had some it factor to him. And when he finally pieced it together, the sky could be the freaking limit. In an era where so many guys are smaller, so many guys wrestle a certain style, so many guys look the exact fucking same and are presented the same, wrestle the same, package the same, talk the same, wouldn't it be nice to have some, something different, someone different, someone who looks different in multiple different ways? And let's not put it this way in terms of Biggie's just a muscle guy. I mean, this is a guy that can move. This is a guy who can do some of the shit that you like out of your performers, that you like out of your wrestlers. So frankly, I'm surprised and borderline disappointed that more people haven't already gotten behind Biggie and tried to force a Biggie ramrod down the WWE's throat. You know, instead of chanting for a Daniel Bryan or a Daniel Bryan or chanting for this guy or chanting for that guy. If you want to hijack a damn show, then at least try to sit there and bring the attention to something important. Why not sit there and do it for big fucking E? And it's not because of the fact alone that he is black. Don't get me wrong. It is a part of it. Because, again, of what it could represent positively for the WWE, both in the short term and especially the long term. But it's also because of the fact he's about as qualified, I think, as anybody else that you could push up to that main event spot. And I've seen the power of what the hardcore fan base can do. I've seen the volume of your voices and how it can resonate and how it can be heard. Imagine the stories that could come out of everybody chanting in every single match for fucking Big E, Big E. About the people bitching about the fact that Big E's not getting a main event push. That Big E's not the one being positioned to win the Royal Rumble. That Big E's not the one main eventing at WrestleMania. I mean, just think about how different the product would feel. And for those of you that are going to bring up the fucking rock, let me say once and for all, a lot of black fans loved the rock. A lot of black fans in the 90s stopped watching a lot of WCW to watch the WWF because of the fucking rock. He was the closest thing they got at the top, and by God, they loved every freaking moment of it because in part they felt it was somebody they could relate to. It was one of them. But at the end of the day, the WWE always will first and foremost speak of him as being Samoan. The Rock himself, first and foremost, will always associate with his mom's ethnicity. Therefore, he identifies first and foremost with being Samoan. He will talk about his mom and his grandpa's legacy and lineage and heritage more than he will talk about Rocky Soul Man Johnson. And we know that's true. The fact is, at the end of the day, when you take The Rock out, there has never been... A black WWE World Heavyweight Champion. They took Ron Simmons and made him freaking Farouk and brought him in with a freaking Spartan helmet. All of these other guys that they dropped the ball with over the years. All of these guys that they could have put in this spot. All of these guys that they could have given a run. You could look at a guy like Shelton Benjamin if you say, well, he didn't have the mic skills. What the fuck is Dolph Ziggler? Shelton Benjamin was a better performer than Dolph Ziggler, in my fucking opinion. How the fuck is Dolph Ziggler a multiple-time world champion of any kind that Dolph and freaking Shelton Benjamin is not? Mark Henry, Booker T, world heavyweight champions. They didn't have the WWE name on there. They got the second-level belt, and we all fucking know it's true. You know, you look at a guy like Kofi Kingston, and again, I will sit there and say this. What is so much better about a Dolph Ziggler than it would be a Kofi Kingston? And five, six years ago, when Randy Orton was sitting there burying his fucking ass, where the hell was the outrage at that point in time? Where were the social media movements to sit there and say, no, this is bullshit, and enough is enough, and it's time for a change. Screw you, screw Orton, push Kofi Kingston now. Well, here's a chance to rectify those previous wrongs, in my opinion. When Apollo Crews comes up to the roster... Here's a guy, you know, he's not a big monster dude, but he's put together, but he is a guy that's a really good athlete, you know, a guy that's had some versatility in terms of working different sides of the fence from a character standpoint over the years. Another guy that you can get behind. So I'll be really disappointed when Apollo Crews finally makes it up to the main roster, and I hope it's sooner rather than damn later, if you guys don't get behind him in as big of a fashion as you did for CM Punk or Daniel Bryan, if not bigger. 
Because at the end of the day, even for somebody like Daniel Bryan, for all the obstacles and barriers and challenges that he faced, the one barrier or obstacle he didn't face was that the fact that he was a white guy. He had this type of pigment. And the WWE likes that. The WWE loves that. God himself beats off to that. Vince can take a cock in the mouth of the ass to that. If you're going to make change happen, then make a real positive change happen. And in my opinion, throwing your weight behind Dean Ambrose or AJ Styles, those are guys that can stand out on their own and potentially get there without you. But based off of the WWE's history, at the end of the day, Big E, Apollo Crews, without you, they have no fucking shot. And even with you, they might not have a freaking shot. So when I'm looking at it from an analysis standpoint, who the hell am I going to throw my weight behind? These guys that could already get there fully without me? Or these guys that need me and still might not get there? I'm going to put all of my effort and energy to help and push these guys. Because at the end of the day, when we're talking about so many things being the fucking same when it comes to the WWE and frankly the stale-ass wrestling business of today as a whole, what could be any more different? What could be any more different, especially for the WWE, than having a black WWE World Heavyweight Champion? Like even when TNA made Bobby Lashley the World Champion, it was amazing how much different the product felt just like that. And shame on Duck TNA for not doing a better job of emphasizing the fact that they were counterculture to WWE. Because when it comes to counterculture to WWE, it doesn't get bigger than having a black world champion because the WWE will say, oh, we're not racist. We celebrate Black History Month, and every year we do a three-minute video montage in the opening to Dr. Martin Luther King. I have a dream! I have a dream! That one day, everybody on the roster will be Caucasian I have a dream. That's the fucking WWE reality that it has been for so many years, and it's the WWE reality that is still there today. Daniel Bryan fans, CM Punk is gone. He might not ever come back. Daniel Bryan is gone, and probably from an in-ring standpoint, will never be back. So if you're looking for somebody to get behind, if you're looking to do something that, once again, can make a difference like it has before, why not make the biggest difference of all? Get behind Big E. Get behind Apollo Crews. And give the WWE no choice but to shut you the fuck up and make it happen. This is the same thing as when they did it with The Rock to a degree. Once they did it, they realized the possibilities, and they reaped the rewards for several years. Now we have to remind the WWE once again that they could do the same thing again and it could bring a very positive change for them. So please, please, stop always getting behind the same fucking white guys. Do something different, damn it. Do something that can make a difference.